guys, welcome to the the buggiest and most worst dynamic range scene video ever. <laughs> I'm suffering for you guys. I don't know what it is, but there are some seriously random like little green bugs. They're not flies. I don't know if they're like some sort of little grasshoppers or something, but there's literally bazillions of them. We are at my favorite and only water source anywhere near my house. Uh, we're at the catwalk in southern New Mexico. And I have for you guys, well, for me, for somebody in my family, <laughs> I have the uh, 6 Pro. Oh, God. Yeah, the Pixel 6 Pro. And I forgot. Hold on. Uno momento. Okay. Found it. All right, so I've got my uh, little clampy thing for the tripod. You know what's interesting about the clampy thing for the tripod is the reason we're here, the reason I'm doing this video is because uh, the Pixel 6 Pro has that new long exposure feature where it fakes the long exposure. And I want to try it out. And that's the other reason we're at the catwalk because this is the only place within like 100 something miles of my house that there's any sort of waterfall at all. I picked the worst time of day because the sun just made it around this canyon. Half of the canyon is in light, half of it is in the shade. So we're also gonna be testing out the HDR and how well that does for the Pixel 6. And I'm gonna be comparing it to my S20 Ultra. I guess I could compare it to Brittany's S21 Ultra too. Um, well. So I took this shot, uh, if you guys will remember, I took this shot. If you're new to the channel, then you can watch this video where I did, uh, I show you how I took this shot from the S21 uh, using conventional methods with a pro mode, long exposure, filters, you know, the works. Um, and I figure this would be a great comparison because I don't have to retake that shot. I can compare it to doing the pixel. I've got the waterfall and the tree in the background, and I really like it. So we're on long exposure, the motion, and it says hold still. I did a couple of test shots before where I didn't use the tripod at all, just when I was scouting and, and handheld, um, and it worked for some definition of work. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. I'm not gonna talk too much out here. Um, I just wanted to show you guys that I am out here, and hopefully we can like, pick up some of these bugs on the video because they are gnarly and I was just absolutely covered in them earlier. So, The other thing about this being in beta is that you, you're probably going to want to take more than one shot even if you think you got it because the software is a little buggy. Uh, so I'm just taking a few shots to see if it's blending the same every time or if it's doing something different. So we're going to compare that. And since we're out here and I have the phone set up, I'm gonna go ahead and take the exact same shot or as close as I can get to the same shot with my S20 and the filters and pro mode. And we're gonna see uh, how the differences are. I'll grab one. I'm at the 1X too, and I'm in regular mode. The one thing I'll, I'll say that I did do is I turned on the raw and you gotta, you gotta turn that on in the settings. Oh, you know, I don't know if it's going to, that's interesting too. I, don't, I have the RAW turned on. I don't know if it's going to allow me to use the RAW in this motion capture. It might just be JPEG. I'll bet you that's the case. I'm just gonna grab this. I'll grab this shot with my S20 Ultra. You know what? Brittany, let me see your phone. I'll do it with the S21 Ultra. That way people don't complain at me in the comments. All right, so now I've got an S21 Ultra, the latest and greatest from Samsung. We'll see how this compares. Let me get my filters though. Those are my, uh, my mirrorless filters for my big boy cameras. But I also have, I've got these little guys from Moment, my little uh, ND filter that's made just for the phones. All right. The problem is you can't really use it for the wide angle, but I like, oh, you know what? The, 
the regular angle on this is good. All right, so I'm gonna switch to pro mode. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use a darker filter, which I happen to have. So I'm just gonna take one of these bigger filters and I'm just gonna put it right over there like that. So I took my little moment filters off and I'm gonna use the big filter. This is a nine stop. So that is a lot more. Okay, the only other thing I'm gonna do right now, since the dynamic range is so bad with, and Promo doesn't have the HDR on the Samsung, is I'm gonna take one more shot and I'm going to expose, I'm gonna take one more shot and I'm gonna expose for the tree right there. That way I can just blend them together and we'll see proper photography with proper pro mode, filters, the works versus all software photography, which is from the Pixel 6. There is also something raining from the skies and it's gotta be some sort of tree sap or something. Either that or it's just like a lot of bug poo, which we're not gonna go with that theory. But uh, don't, just don't look up right now like I just did. <laughs> All right. so. I've got the shots that I care for, um, that I want to test out for this. So let's go back to, let's go back to the studio where there's tea and no bugs and no sun. And we'll talk about this. And I want to see, I want to take a look at these images in Photoshop and see um, how the pixel stacks up, how it edits. All right, let's get out of here. I'll see you guys in a second for you. About two hours for me. <laughs> see you in a second. Next day, back in the studio, cleaned, refreshed, no bugs, no sun, uh, lots of tea, and I've just, I've been to the catwalk a lot, like hundreds of times, and I've never seen bugs like that. Like, they're some sort of little aphid, or they weren't flies, even though they were flying, but whatever they were, they were weird. and. Whatever that tree misty stuff was, it was either some sort of leaf sap that was not sticky at all, it was very watery-like, uh, or it was um, basically like bug poo, which is like the bugs just, I, I don't know, I, it's weird. <laughs> so we're glad we're out of that. I definitely suffered for you guys, so hopefully these pictures uh, are worth it. So let's just dive into uh, Photoshop and Bridge and let's look at, I wanna look at some of the raw files because I had the raw enabled uh, and I'm gonna talk about that in the end. I wanna look at definitely, obviously the motion blurring images and let's just start with that. All right, so first let's take a look at some of these motion blur images since that's kind of what I'm mainly interested in. So here's one of the first ones that I took and you can see, well, if I go back, you can see this is the motion board. So what it does is it does the motion cover there and then it shows you the motion, uh, the original image there. So you can see already that that is doing quite a lot for the smoothing, but let's take a closer look at this. So, Right off the bat, uh, everything looks fine. Detail looks good in the rocks. You know, overall image is fine, but look, this is where we start seeing problems. And this is where the software being in beta and, you know, being fairly new to this is having a lot of problems. So we're looking in here, we're seeing nice uh, water blurring. And even up here, we're seeing the water smoothing in the top part we're seeing the water smoothing here 
and then we're seeing areas like right in here where it's having trouble with that and then you can just see where it just completely stopped so it just gave up on life right there and didn't even try to smooth that out so let's look at another so here is a tighter shot and you can see it didn't have those issues because i cut it off where that problematic area was and this worked uh, a little bit better however in terms of artistic composition i don't like this image as much and of course that's subjective uh, that's neither here nor there but now let's take a look at again i tried doing some wider shots and again it didn't do it now i this is where i turn the phone uh, to landscape orientation and you can see does a decent job with HDR which is really surprising given how blown out these highlights in the bottom were and how dark these shadows were so the HDR is working quite well um, this though you can see where maybe it tried to do it again right here but then there's this gap where it just stopped and it, it this is way smoother than even this bit in here and all of this bit here. So again, I can't stress enough saying that this is in beta and it will probably hopefully get better over time as Google gets more data and their algorithms get more refined. But for now, you really gotta pick your compositions and be careful. Let's look at a couple more uh, real quick so this is a much nicer overall exposure because i clipped out all the highlights except for this little bit right here which is fine um, but you can see where it did a good job on this river area all the way back you can see it smoothed that out uh, all the way back and then all the way down of course uh, that was the easy bit i think so overall this is a much more pleasing image and this is one that i'm going to edit uh, myself so I'm gonna go back and edit that one but we're gonna wait on that and I will show you all of my finished edits and keep in mind that when I do go back and edit this one uh, that is a JPEG only because there are no raw options obviously uh, for a processed image for it to do that all right so here's another one where we're looking at now there's no specific waterfall but now we're seeing the river and we're seeing all parts of it nice and smooth. Uh, and that's pretty good. But again, look how close I am to the river. Look at you know the, the single flowing direction. We're also noting that while it's doing this computation for the smoothing of the water, it's also doing computation for the uh, HDR. And you can see how those highlights up there are really blown out but it does do an overall really good job with this area was completely washed out in the view finder uh, in, the, in the, before it did its uh, software magic so overall i think this would be an image that i could possibly edit as well uh, and maybe turn into a nicer image so again we're looking here it's trying to uh, trying to do the motion long exposure thing you can see it's working a little bit so if we if we scroll in here you're seeing some wonkiness though like that just looks blurry instead of actually motion blurred that looks like gaussian blurred and then again you're seeing the heavy blur on these leaves here and then we're seeing a little bit of this water being motion blur so distance to your water source is fairly important as of right now for this algorithm overall it's a bummer because overall i really like this shot uh, and maybe actually i'll go ahead and edit this image and see if i can clean that up because i really like the composition i love this dark river cutting through i love the fall leaves on both sides and then the backlight coming through and then the catwalk up there so we'll see if i can make an image out of that later all right, so let's take a look at this image real quick. This image was a really hard image to make by any standard for any camera. This is the edited JPEG. Let me go pull the raw from this image. 
So you can see these two side by side here. So this on the right is the raw image with zero editing uh, straight out of camera with the raw enabled. So this is the DNG file and this is the JPEG with no editing from me, only with editing from how it edited the JPEG. So you can see, I mean, this sky was blown out. The tree leaves were, uh, most of them were blown out. These ones were way too dark. The path shot, you know, the path, all of this was too dark. And I think it did a fairly good job at just a, st a standard HDR look, but you can definitely tell, you know, the processing there. Um, but I am impressed. I, I think that did do a pretty good job and possibly this would be an editable image. So I'll probably edit this one as well and see uh, what I can get out of it. So looking here real quick, I just want to see what happens when I pull the highlights down and, to, and try to edit this myself. I actually have a preset for that I made for HDR and I want to see if it comes close. So that's not bad. Um, and then I'll just bring up those shadows a little bit more, actually a lot more. So <laughs> that's all the way up, but it'll be interesting to see if it can handle that. So that was my preset for that. And that's not bad. So I think it actually did a little bit better. It did, you can see in the leaves, you can see in these areas, uh, in this instance, it did a very good job for you know this highlight recovery and bringing that back. And that's the software um, that would be very hard to even reproduce in Photoshop. So here's my very quick preset my HDR single shot HDR preset versus Google's uh, HDR. And this is my preset from the raw again. And this is Google's HDRing and then resulting JPEG. And yeah, you can see that uh, it did a better job in areas like that. So you can see uh, the difference where here on mine, uh, there's still that bit of like chromatic aberration and the contrast wonkiness around the edges of the leaves. Whereas this in, in the phone did a really good job. So that uh, is quite surprising. But the only thing that I'll say here is I would not be done editing this image here. So I am going to edit this further and do the rest of my edits to it because the presets are by no means to me a full edit on something. They're just a good starting point. Uh, so I'm going to take this from here and then I'll show you guys in a little bit the resulting edit. Oh, let me just, here's a couple of sunset shots real quick. Um, it wasn't an amazing sunset by any means, but we have, this is the raw, this is the raw image here uh, and you can see like you can see the dynamic range and it's struggling you know this is the sky is completely blown out and then the foreground is very very dark and then if we go look here this is this is the the jpeg image that it edited um, and I didn't do anything. And so that's its HDR. And to me, <laughs> that looks absolutely horrible. So like if I were to go back in here to the raw images, if I were to even think about editing this, I don't know, I would maybe start with a little tonal change, but mostly we're just gonna see if we can even bring those highlights down at all. And we're looking at the histogram and we're seeing just how crushed those whites were against the wall there. And that is pretty hard recoverable, but you know, working with this, that's actually not horrible. 
All right, so there's a very, very quick edit of mine of cleaning up that raw image. And you can see there's still, you know, enough detail, but I didn't do any wonkiness like this did back here and it, tr it tried too hard. So that's way overbaked. And obviously that mountain looks horrible. The sky still looks weird. Um, the artifacting and the darkening and the trees there looks weird. So I try to keep mine a little more natural and not go that hard. And this isn't an image that I would use at all, but this is a good example of showing uh, what we can do with the RAWs from the Pixel 6, especially in a seriously high dynamic scene like that without bracketing. I didn't do any bracketing, which you would have typically done on a standard mirrorless or DSLR. So that's pretty cool to know that we can at least get detail back from that um, seemingly crushed and horrible image. <laughs> All right, so here are the raw images from the S21 Ultra. And you can see I had to bracket because of the exposure being in pro mode. You don't have the luxury of having the auto HDR. Uh, so I did have to bracket in order to get a proper exposure. However, that does give me a lot more control over the final image. So I am going to pull out all the stops and I'm going to use the uh, all of my editing tricks and I'm going to combine multiple images to get the proper exposure because this is what you have to do to match the S21 Ultra to the software in the pixel. Um, so let's do that real quick. Okay, so here's the S21 Ultra image on the right, which was a blend of five different shots for the exposure. So you can see we still have just a hair bit of harsh highlights there. And it's pretty closely matched on the Pixel 6. So this is the Pixel 6 on the left. And this is a single edited in-camera JPEG shot that it gave me. I have not edited this yet. But this is giving us a really good idea of all of the things that we have to go through from the S21 to get to you know, what the Pixel did in camera. And I think that's really impressive and it says a lot. However, this image on the right to me is more editable because this comprised of the raw images. And I was really able, and also the smoothing is way natural. So you can see the difference. That's the other thing we wanna look at. Look at the difference here in the water compared to that so this looks way better and because it's natural that's what's really happening that was the long exposure that it captured and this was the one that was faked so if you were to just see this one on the left on instagram or whatever you would think oh wow that's cool and they did a long exposure and it looks good but if you compare it to a real long exposure you're going to start seeing those uh, wonky bits you know and then we're looking down here And again, the naturalness, the smoothness of the S21 Ultra on the right, to me, is much better. I much prefer that to this blended look on the left. And again, neither one of these images are done editing. I just did the initial edits in Camera Raw just to get it started. So this is now my starting point for the S21 Ultra image. And then this would be my starting point for the Pixel image. And I will, when I'm done, I will show you the final edit. Um, and there may not be too much difference. You know, there's just some subtle things that I'm going to do in Photoshop the way that I like to edit. Uh, and we'll bring those out. All right. So final thoughts on my first, my initial, my inaugural <laughs> outing with the Pixel 6 Pro for landscape. And mostly, again, this was looking at the long exposure simulation because as landscape photographers who love water, 
uh, we really enjoy that. And the prospect of not having to have tripods and filters and, you know, the works to lug around really, that's the thing that entices me most about this is it's giving people so many more options and abilities to get these kind of shots that they never, that they never would have been able to get before. Uh, or if you're like me and you just don't want to take all of that gear every once in a while and you just want to go out with your family uh, or friends or whatever and have a nice hike. And if you happen on something like this in the catwalk where I was, um, it's super nice to be able to know that you can get some very decent looking images especially for you know social media and the the like to just be able to take that out with again no tripod no filters and get something like this which is i think very acceptable for the general purpose of enjoyable photography are any of the images that i used or that i got with the pixel out of this outing are any of them like professional quality portfolio keepers uh, definitely not. not not in my opinion and again that's subjective and i'm not saying that you can't get that out of the pixel i'm saying that what i got today was not what i would consider portfolio worthy for me uh, but again i hold myself to a very high standard and i'm a professional photographer i do this for a living so all of that's subjective does it have problems with the long exposure? Absolutely. You saw those problems. They're very evident. Those problems are exacerbated by, or they're made worse when you put them next to the real thing. And I say the real thing is, you know, I used, I'm in this context, I'm saying that the S21 Ultra did to me a much better job with the, the long exposure but you saw the work that I had to put into it to get that. Not only the work that I had to put into it in the field with the tripod and the filters and the exposures and, and the testing and the bracketing and all of that, but then the editing as well. I had to go in and do the HDR and the multiple uh, shot and the bracketing and the editing and then the more editing, but all of that paid off. And for me, if I were only gonna post one picture from this entire trip, uh, it would be the one that I took with the S21 Ultra. And that's subjective, but that's my choice. That's what I think. But that's also because I had that option. I didn't bring my R5. Well, I brought the R5, but I let Brittany use it. Uh, I mean, it's hers. I didn't let her use it. She she was using it. Uh, you know, so I have my, my R5, my R6, my big boy cameras. I didn't use any of those for comparison. Um, it's just not fair, you know? But having said that, looking at what I got out of the S21 Ultra and even what I got out of the Pixel, these images here that are the edited versions of the final edits of the my favorite images from the Pixel, I think they're wonderful. I think for what they are, for what they came from, you know, the fact that they came out of a phone and that I had that much to work with in the editing room to start with, um, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And I'm, I would be super proud to have these images uh, rather than nothing at all. And that's the beauty of it. That's what I always say on my channel and to my workshop clients and to uh, everyone around me is that the best camera is the one that you have on you, you know, and I, that's something I learned a long time ago. Uh, you know, Chase Jarvis says that a lot and I'm a big fan of his. And it's true, you know, it's cliche and it's true. The best camera is the one you have on you. And the Pixel 6 Pro to me so far is looking uh, like it. it's pretty great. You know, I, I have only messed with it for this one outing. I don't think the camera is quite on par in all aspects with the overall cameras of the S21 Ultra. I think so far, uh, preliminarily, I still prefer the S21 Ultra camera over the Pixel 6, but if I wouldn't have had nothing but my S21, I wouldn't have been able to get those waterfall shots uh, in a similar fashion as I did with the Pixel if I wouldn't have had the tripod and the filters and the knowledge and all of that stuff. 
So I really enjoyed that and I really look forward to um, having the Pixel 6 in situations like that for me personally, although I am giving this phone to my son. Um, it's his phone. It's replacing his Pixel 3 that he's had for a couple of few years now. So he's going to be very happy with it. But if I want to steal it, I will because that's how I roll. <laughs> but that's a long wrap up. That's my thoughts. Uh, you guys have seen preliminarily what I can do with it and what maybe is possible with it. You've seen some of the downfalls and some of the um, upfalls, <laughs> some of the pros and cons. You've seen that. I think it does a great job with the HDR. In some cases, it does a little too great of a job and it definitely can look unnatural. So be careful about that when you're shooting in auto with the HDR. Watch that white balance. Be careful when you're using those those buggy beta modes with the software blurring and all that stuff. But if you have an awareness of all of that and you're really trying to get more than a snapshot, that's the whole thing is the pixel is making it to where it's as easy as possible. There's as little thinking as possible to do. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to get an image that's more than a snapshot. The pixel six can do it. And it just takes some effort as I've shown um, to get the most out of your images. So I hope that helps. If you have any question about anything that I did or didn't do concerning, you know, testing this first go of the Pixel 6 with the water exposure, blendy bits and all that, leave those down below and I will definitely answer them. Hit that like button if you're still here because uh, that's the best thing you can do for my channel and I really appreciate it. And kudos to you if you are still here making it through that super long, super detailed video. But uh, I do it because I know some of you guys care and I appreciate you so much for sticking around and giving me your time. I will see you again when I do. I've got some Astro stuff for the Pixel 6 planned. I've got some more landscape stuff, uh, some more landscape general stuff, some phone photography challenges, all the goods coming up soon. So I'll see you out there in another video very soon. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.